I didn't kill that man, Michael. I was set up. Swear to me. I swear to you, Michael. I find it incumbent that you see the inside of a prison cell, Mr. Schofield. Getting you out of here. It's impossible. Not if you design the place it isn't. You're asking me to break the law. I'm asking you to make a mistake. Forget to lock up. As soon as it gets dark, we go. Sound the alarm. We did it, Link. However this plays out. I have no regrets. Prison Break was a very pivotal and rewarding chapter in my own personal development. Ever so often, a job will come along where you say, this is special. We didn't know if Prison Break was going to be a hit. I think they called it a phenomenon. Prison Break is a job that, by and large, all of the actors on it owe their careers to. I think it was ahead of its time. Be mark Action! Edgy. You can't possibly get away with this. I don't think you want to find out how badly I want to get my brother out of here. Dark. Who are you fooling? You ain't got it in you. Cinematic. To have that be on network television on Fox specifically was remarkable in 2005. I'm a fan myself, and I'm very blessed to be part of something that changed the history of TV. Dude. I died seven years ago. Left behind a brother, a wife, a son. But the dead talk, if you listen, because not all deaths are the same. Some are real. Some are a story. This resurrection came to be because Dominic Purcell and myself wound up working together on another show playing completely different characters. It was just like we had never stopped working with one another, and we just started talking about Prison Break. Out of that conversation came this idea that there might be more to the story. Season five, it's, it's taking it to a different level. As soon as we got the first script, I just knew this is going to be great. We've got Paul Schering, who is spearheading these new nine episodes, and he originated the show, so it's got his tone. It's going to be the biggest version of Prison Break. We're introducing new aspects of these characters. We're housing that in this massive international story that spans the entire world. It feels like the biggest season of Prison Break ever. It has this epic mythological scope. Paul Shearing, the creator, was really excited about doing a cool, action-packed season five that captures the intensity and the adrenaline of the first season. It's not just about breaking out of prison. That's the beginning of the story. The goal is to break out of the country itself, out of the entire Middle East. All the people that you loved from the original Prison Break will all play a very significant role in helping Michael and Lincoln get out of this alive. It feels like it's happening out there in the world today. At the same time, it's a continuation of the same themes that worked so well the first time around. Family, sacrifice, loyalty, and brotherhood. Lincoln and Michael are the heart of the show. They always have been. And I think it's one of the things the fans can look forward to is their reunion. The connection between the two brothers is a universal theme. It's love, it's bond, it's blood. It's a story about a group of people who believe in devotion to one another at all costs. When you have a fundamental heart at the base of a massive epic, as we intend this to be, I think that the audience is just going to be like, I'm in. Prison Break fans are by far the most vocal and loyal that I've ever encountered, which given that we've been off the air for seven years is remarkable. It's something you never quite get used to. I'm humbled by it and I'm very grateful to the show and the fans. It is great that we have so many of the old cast back because I think it's one more thing for the fans to look forward to. But we've also got a handful of great new characters as well. It really is bringing all of those pieces, all of that family back together again, and that is the heart of the season. Still tight as scales on a snake. 
teabag gets out of prison, and then boom. Must have friends in high places, Bagwell. No cesspool like you gets his walking papers, I'll never know. He gets the first clue. And one last piece of correspondence. And he's right back into it again, of the very thing that he did not want to be involved with again, which is Michael drawing him in. Lack of day. Lincoln has gone to the depths of despair at this point. He's lost his brother. It's been seven years. Before you know it, Lincoln was back in the old hood doing odd jobs, moving things from A to B for gangsters and crooks. Burroughs, how about you step out and pay us the 100 grand you owe us? He gets information from Teabag that there's a possibility that uh, Michael may be alive. Seems fate has deigned to join us at the hip once again. Have a look-see. Looks like your brother might just be alive. You know, I had made my peace of what was coming, and you show up and give me the one thing a man in my situation shouldn't have. Hope. Now that's gonna be taken away. Don't do this, Link. I got three weeks. What do you want me to do? <laughs> Michael was someone that always used to show him the way to a degree and he didn't have that guiding light in his life. My life's been a mess ever since you left. Falling back into my old ways. Here's a guy who lost what was most near and dear to him, which was his brother. Hey, Mark. When the potential of his brother being alive comes on his radar. If you didn't get off my deck, I'm gonna crack your skull. I get a, a surprise visit from Teabag, who Lincoln despises. Have a look-see. Teabag said he thinks Michael's alive. It's impossible. That's what I thought. He starts this journey off into the world, which is to find out, you know, ostensibly, you know, is his brother alive? You know, you want it to be true. Losing a brother, massive hole that leaves in your life. Sarah, she has moved on with her life. You're talking about a woman that had this profound, life-changing relationship with a man seven years ago that lasted less than two years. Michael was sick. He was terminally sick. And he died. She's a different person than she was before. She was never a wife and mother in the show. And she certainly was never a widow. I don't know that Sarah would have made it were it not for her son. I think her son has become the center of her universe, partly because he's all she has left of Michael. As he gets older, is more like his father every day. He looks more like him, he thinks more like him. What was my father like? My real father. Somewhere along the way, without looking for it, she met a man who was willing to take what she had left to give which isn't a lot. Jacob Ness is a professor of game theory at the University of Ithaca. He's a really good guy. He's basically there for her in her moment of need. And he has stepped in to raise a child who's not his own. And he's done it with generosity and class. I don't think Sarah and her new husband, Jacob, are under any delusions that this is like a love of your life kind of a situation, but I think there's respect, and there's friendship, and there's comfort. I've got a stake in this, too, mm -hmm. okay? This is my wife, my son. The reintroduction of the possibility that Michael might be still alive starts to threaten that relationship, because she's very conflicted, because the man she's married to is, is a wonderful guy. But, you know, of course, we as Prison Break fans are like, well, but you got to get Sarah and Michael together. I think Michael and Sarah, they will be drawn towards one another kind of no matter what. Ultimately, these are two people who would do anything for each other. The question is, is he still the man that she remembers? Is he deserving of her love? Is he deserving of a, a happy ending? Your brother's dead, thank you. Where is he dead? Where's the body? If he's been out there for all of these years, what, did he abandon his own son? Can he still call himself a good man? Is he still considered a hero? Is he worthy of Sarah and their child? Michael Schofield was like a storm and frightening and mysterious. And he would show up in your life out of the clear blue sky. And then he would disappear just as quickly 
The storms, they can come back, can't they? If I needed to get to Yemen, that's something you could help me with. There's a period of time where Sino, he goes on a journey and he figures out a way to make himself happy. It's a change in culture, it's a change in, in characteristics. It's a huge change for this man. And of course, where we left off before, it was always a tug of war with these guys because they're trying to break out and get their own lives back. How is this friendship or this lack of friendship going to mesh right now? Lincoln is in search of, uh, of Sino, and he finds him in a mosque, and he needs my help. I thought he was dead. So did everyone. Because the clues are leading to a country far away, is to come to a guy like me, Sino, who has ties in the country where Michael could possibly be. Needs Sino to, to come to the Middle East, negotiate and to translate. We do a little research, and uh, we're off and running. You really got contacts? Contacts with contacts. Seven years back, my brother waded into hell to save me. He was a genius that no prison could hold. We need to break him out, wade into that hell and find him, and bring him back to life. Michael reappears in a prison in Yemen, and that's changed him. He's got a new deadly set of skills. He's now always vigilant. It's always been one of the most interesting parts of the character to me is that he's a good man pursuing good ends. Please tell me, you still plan on getting us out of here? I'll start the process. But the means are somewhat shady. It's the good stuff, morphine derivative. I need access to your cell phone and a credit card number. His hands are dirty at this point in the story. Some of the prominent new characters are prison mates of Michael's. Then he just phase you with all the fact that we're gonna die in here? We're not gonna die. We're still getting out, all of us. He has formed an alliance that worked together to hatch this plan to escape. Whip is Michael Schofield's right-hand man. He's very much the lovable rogue. He's like a brother to me. I had zero. Nobody told you recruited me. It's very loyal and very dedicated to Michael and what we're trying to achieve together. Nobody has the ability to trust each other, but these few guys are in the same cell and they're from international territories and they kind of bond together. Getting over that wall is just the start. And every one of you is crucial to that plan. He's got a whole new family and there's a question, who is Michael now? Sometimes, my friend, I can't tell which is bigger, your plans or your lies. But every time I get the new script, I'm turning the pages, I put it down, I lay in my bed, and I just can't go to sleep. There just couldn't be a greater crucible to put them in. Like, everything is a threat from all sides, and you don't know who to trust. We're the only ones coming into the place. Yeah, the country's falling apart. Who's that contact again? Another new character is Sheba, who is trying to help her country from within while it's being eviscerated from without by this invasion of ISIS forces. This is very radicalized neighborhood. She's a Yemeni activist and a freedom fighter. C-Note and Lincoln need someone that knows the ins and outs of Yemen, and so that's where my character comes in. The suburbs are out there, front line of the war. You have to get us past the checkpoint. Two Americans will never make it without you. She's my go-to girl. She's uh, the girl that can actually unlock doors that I can't unlock. There. It says, yes, the man in the picture is here, and we can see him, but only because we're dealing with Shiba. Michael. They're tats. Michael has a new set of tattoos, and they are pivotal to the story. They're different in terms of the idea around them. It's got that great prison break puzzle that will really be something exciting as it unravels as to what they are and why he has them. I have always liked the symbolism of Michael being a marked man, and the tattoos are a reflection of that. Sound speed! Camera sight! Real camera! Action! 
coming back to do this again, one of the huge mandates was, we're not going to shoot this on a soundstage in LA. We're going to go to Africa. Morocco was a once-in-a-lifetime experience. The show has an international fan base, and going to these various places, actually shooting in Morocco for Yemen, gives the show a look and a flavor. It just looks gorgeous. We were in Warzazat, which has cool Arabic architecture, and then the Sahara Desert. It is incredibly hot and incredibly windy and gusty and sandy, and every day was just brutal in its own way. And these actors were really impressive to stick with it and do what they did. The look of the show is very intense, very real. With the action sequences so big, you don't have time to make a mistake. You really got to go for it. Three, two, one, and boom! We're standing outside a technical school here in Warzizat, Morocco, that we've turned into a prison. For some of the shots, we'll be adding additional pieces to the prison, mostly which is a practical prison that they've done a great job building here in Morocco. Luca, our production designer, is incredibly talented, and he's created these amazing environments and sets. It feels like we're making a movie. I think the original series had a big movie feel for television. So besides the scope of actually where we're shooting, there will be planes, trains, automobiles, shipping vessels. I mean, you name it, it's in there. It's bigger than any other adventures because this is one that spans the globe. It goes from the Middle East to Europe to Africa, across the Atlantic, all the way back to the US. And ultimately, the story is, what is the mystery of Michael Schofield? I was a fan of the original series. At the time when it first came out, I read the script. And when I read it, A, I was blown away because it just was a perfect kind of story set up for a show. The thing that really stood out to me was the relationship between the brothers and what you're willing to do for family. I think we had a nice blend of action, adventure, and heart. It was about family, it was about sacrifice, it was about loyalty, brotherhood specifically, yeah. as well as like the cliffhangers and the cool engineering stuff and the tattoo. It has that DNA of the original Prison Break, and we all felt that there was more story to tell. It's gonna be incredibly exciting. I think this is going to be better than the original Prison Break. I think more and more, especially in light of these last nine episodes, there's also something about suffering and endurance. All of our characters go through extreme hardships, and I think there's something inspiring about watching someone endure and endure and endure and come out the other side. Well, one of the amazing things about the new season is I think that there's been some time off between the four seasons and this, which lets there be a little bit of a reset and build up the mystery again. What has happened to Michael? What has he been doing for the last seven years? Why hasn't he contacted Sarah? Is he the same guy? Is he a good guy? Is he a bad guy? And that's sort of the fun. We've got nine episodes to do what we used to do in 22. It is what you expect Prison Break to be, which is television by the edge of your seats. It's the way Paul's sharing rights, and that's what makes him such a brilliant writer. He writes in a very multi-layered, almost Shakespearean kind of way. They're just plots, just intersecting and weaving in and out. And at the end of the day, they all kind of connect, and it makes perfect sense. And people just are left like, give me the next episode. There's an expectation to bring you what you know, but I also think there's a responsibility on the writer's part to uh, let these characters have learned something. Please don't give us the same old thing. Paul, I think, because he knew he was doing a short run, it was gonna be an event series, I think he wanted to just bring back the people that he could really tell a full story about, really give them the time they needed. When we see the characters this time around, they've been affected by life and its turmoils. Teabag and C-Note and different characters are coming back as part of the family, but they're all kind of getting a really unique, cool story. It was something that I think everyone wanted to be a part of, and you felt that energy, you felt the synergy, you felt everything just pulsating around this project. It was just like old times. We all fit, we all understand each other's rhythms, we're all good friends, just like a big family event. To come back to this group of people that we started with was really, it was emotional. It resonated, I think, in surprising ways for all of us. Coming back to this project was like riding a bike. This story 
still lived in me somewhere. And my very first scene, I'm behind bars, Dominic's on the other side, and it was just like old times. Just looking into his eyes was enough to ground me in the who am I of these characters. There's so many new people, so many new characters, incredible, incredible talent. The writing is top notch. The compilation of the action and the intrigue and the drama is, is heightened dramatically. It's just nonstop thrills, nonstop mystery and information uh, being revealed. It really matters that we deliver something that honors the commitment that the fans have given to us. You can expect what you always saw in Prison Break, which is a lot of shorter nails and a lot of, no, wait a minute, I gotta wait till next week. It's a, it's a grand epic. It's not, it's not constrained to a prison. It's not a throwback. It's right here, right now. It was a great show. It was a great experience. Yeah. And, and I'll do it again. Let's go.